Welcome to part two of two in the Sci-5 teleportation series. In the first video, we went over what science currently knows about teleportation and successful experiments that have proved its effectiveness. If you haven't seen that video, you should go check it out. But if you'd prefer to just get right into part two, no worries, you'll make it just fine. In this video, we will go over the three remaining questions. Is it likely we will ever be able to harness the technology for large objects in everyday use? Could it ever work for humans? And what are the predictions made by scientists on the possible future of teleportation? So let's get into it. Is it likely we will ever be able to harness the technology for large objects and everyday use? When we think of teleportation, we think of moving people or perhaps objects such as your suitcase to different locations without having to go through the exhaustive process of actually moving. We'll start by talking about that, but there is a much less obvious use of quantum teleportation specifically that we can see implemented within our lifetime, and we will get to that shortly. To begin, the application of the technology so far exists just in the quantum world. Weirdly enough, the quantum world seems to have different laws than our macroscopic world. The macroscopic world being the objects that can be viewed by the naked eye. The body of laws that apply to the quantum world is referred to as quantum mechanics. This means the first challenge of teleportation would be to imitate a similar situation that would work outside of the world of quantum mechanics. As of now, that seems pretty unattainable for physicists, but for the video's sake, I'm going to assume that in the near future, we do find a way to replicate the effect. If we used this method, we would still not be sending the object itself, just the information of the state of the object, while destroying the original. So we could teleport your suitcase full of all your belongings to your vacation destination, but in reality, it would just be an exact replica, not the original. But if this is just an object and you can't tell the difference, who cares? Provided you're not sentimentally attached to, say, a baseball glove handed down to you from your grandfather, it basically works exactly how you would want it to. The real ethical challenge comes when we talk about teleporting humans. We can get to that shortly, but first, the practical use of quantum teleportation that real scientists are trying to develop as we speak. A quantum internet. A quantum internet would be based in quantum cryptography. Quantum cryptography would be the most secure way to send information that exists in the world of computers today. The quantum internet itself would theoretically exist within our current form of internet. Those who wished to use the quantum internet would be able to log into it via the internet internet, and then take advantage of the hyper-secure quantum network. Quantum computers could send encrypted information in the form of qubits, or in long form, quantum bits. A qubit is similar to a classical bit, but instead of being in one state, a one or a zero, it can be physically realized in a two-state device. But enough about the actual technology. Why would it be so secure? Quantum cryptography doesn't actually teleport the information being sent. Rather, it teleports the key needed to unlock the encrypted information. In the current system, encryption keys have been known to be intercepted and copied while on their journey to the desired recipient. In part one of this video, I mentioned how a particle that changes when observed would be very useful in some cases, and this is some cases. The key would literally be impossible to intercept because if it was observed, it would change. And even if someone found a way around that, the receiver on the other end would see the effect on their entangled particle in real time. This would be the ultimate security in the computer world. The challenge for this just lies in creating a mass quantum network. The lead of the Chinese team that teleported a photon to their very own quantum satellite says he has plans to launch more quantum satellites in the next five years. By 2030, he hopes to have quantum communications spanning multiple countries. That means in just 11 years as of this video's release, we very well may see teleportation being used as a form of hyper-secure computer networks. Not exactly humans being teleported to Mars, but hey, still pretty impressive. But speaking of humans, it's time to get into part four. Could it ever work for humans? We could start by addressing the obvious ethical problems with teleporting a human using the current method of teleportation. If we were to teleport a human, the same rules would apply. The human themselves would not be teleported, but the information about the exact makeup of the human would be transported to a set of particles that would then take the form of the now destroyed human on the other end. Now, this turns into a bit of a philosophical conversation. Say the teleportation was successful. 
there are two main things to think about at this point. Is there such a thing as a soul? How do we really know when something is actually alive? Theoretically, we would assume active brain circuits qualify as a quality to life, and perhaps a pumping heart would mean alive in the physical sense, but we've never tested the idea of transferring one life to another body. What does that even mean? Would the body on the other side actually be alive? If all of the brain functions and body functions work, does that qualify? The second thing we have to think about is what it means to be truly you. If successful teleportation took place, and the new working body on the other side was fully cognizant, does that mean that it is still the same human that was on the other side before teleportation? Or does that human die, and then an exact replica lives on to take their place? These aren't necessarily questions that can be answered with science, like I said, this is more of a philosophical debate. I'd be curious to know what your take on the issue is though, let me know in the comments below. There is, however, a few issues that arise in terms of science when we discuss the idea of human teleportation. For one, we mentioned earlier that the macroscopic world and the quantum world have some differences in terms of laws. Just as it would be, as of now, essentially impossible to teleport a macroscopic object, the same rules apply to macroscopic beings. Meaning, as of now, the technology we understand doesn't allow for human teleportation. If we did, however, find a way to get around that, we would need some pretty amazing computers to pull it off, considering that for each human, the computer would have to analyze all of the atoms that make up a human body, and that's more than a trillion trillion. It's hard to imagine a processor that strong, but then again, look how far computers have come just in the past 50 years. But there's one more problem I wanted to get at. Assuming we figure out how to bypass these two issues, every human teleportation would be a substantial risk. The human body is very complex, and extremely deliberate. Even the slightest mix-up of a single molecule could lead to severe neurological or physiological damage. There could be no margin of error at all if we ever wanted to really use the technology. That in itself would be a difficult feat. What are the predictions made by scientists on the possible future of teleportation? If you've ever watched the Discovery or History Channel for more than a few minutes, you'll recognize the physicist Michio Kaku. Kaku has earned a reputation as a very optimistic scientist. He has become a controversial figure in the physics world, as on one end, he has brought interest into the scientific world to the public, and on the other, he has somewhat exploited and exaggerated real science in the name of publicity. On the matter of teleportation, he has publicly stated that he personally believes at our rate of advancement and the information we already know about the technology, it is likely we will see full human teleportation in just a few decades. In an interview with Big Think, he stated, In the coming years, we do expect to be able to teleport molecules, maybe water and carbon dioxide, and after that, who knows, maybe even DNA. He did also clarify that although it may be possible, it comes with many challenges that would need to be fixed. To throw a less controversial scientist in, Dr. Mary Jacqueline Romero from the School of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Glasgow also has a pretty optimistic view on the future of teleportation. On the matter, she stated, Teleporting a person atom by atom will be very difficult, but perhaps developments in chemistry or molecular biology will allow us to do it more quickly. The good thing about teleportation is that there is no fundamental law telling us that it cannot be done, and with technical advances, I would estimate teleportation that we see in the films will be with us by 2080. As great as that sounds, there are just as many scientists who say we will never see human teleportation, as it is physically impossible. For example, scientist Frank Haley has gone on the record to say that due to the complexity of the human body, it is safe to say human teleportation will never be possible. His very detailed article for Slate covers all of the reasons he is confident it will never happen. But then again, many of the greatest scientific advancements were laughed at in their time. In conclusion, teleportation is possible, and it has already been done. But the science behind movie-like applications is still very much up in the air. Remember though, the strides science has made in teleportation have only been made in the past few decades. Give it a few more and who knows where we'll be. Maybe there will be human teleportation in the year 2080. Maybe it really is impossible. But as of now, no one can say for sure. What do you think? Are you optimistic? I'd love to hear everyone's ideas in the comment section. 
If you want to read further into the topic and maybe dig a bit deeper into the science behind the theories, I will leave a bunch of links to my sources in the description. Thank you for watching this episode of sci Fives. I really hope all of you enjoy this format, and I really wanted to do this topic justice. Let me know if you liked it or not. If you did, like and subscribe for more videos on all things science and science fiction.